anti-missile and air defense systems. If you're a soldier on the ground, there's one thing you really, really want to get your support system to get right. That's knocking missiles out of the sky before they can get to you. You'll take it all day, every day. And pushing that capability forward recently, Army Air Defenders made the first remote launch of one of their most powerful systems outside of a testing scenario. Soldiers with the E-3 Air Defense Battery fired off the Ballistic Missile Defense Terminal High Altitude Air Defense or THAAD launch in the Pacific. The E-Battery soldiers worked with a host of Air Force wings, squadrons, and signaliers from the 307th Expeditionary Signal Battalion enhanced out of Hawaii. The soldiers and airmen took the THAAD vehicle-mounted system from Guam to Rota, an island in the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Islands, by way of the C-17 Globemaster III airplane. The exercise, called Talon Lightning, included aircraft maintenance, air transport, logistical, and cyberspace support specialists from the 715th Air Mobility Operations Group. It's the first time that troops and airmen have loaded up a THAAD, flown it to a battlefield, and fired it remotely in a single exercise. So what is a THAAD? The THAAD defends against short, medium, and intermediate range ballistic missiles as they descend or re-enter the atmosphere. The solid fuel, single-stage 2,000-pound rocket can fly as high as 150 kilometers, or 93 miles, and reach speeds as fast as Mach 8.2, which is 10,000 kilometers per hour. Following the Scud missile attacks on the U.S.-led Coalition 1991 Persian Gulf War, the Army began work on developing an air defense system for just such threats. The first test flight of the THAAD system by Lockheed Martin happened in late 2005. First produced for fielding in 2008, the THAAD system eventually fell under the DOD's Missile Defense Agency, but with a shift to more peer and near-peer threats, air defense has taken on more of a role and a focus for Army units than it has in recent wars. Last year, Lockheed Martin announced the delivery of its 600th system in the 15-year production history. Now, a lot of people might confuse the THAAD with a well-known Patriot system. The Patriot Defense Missile System is a surface-to-air missile system that uses radar tracking to detect and then fire on incoming threats. It was produced in the 1970s and fielded in the early 1980s. It has been used to destroy Scud missiles, drones, and enemy aircraft. The two systems together, Patriot and THAAD, have been called the Army's bread and butter for air defense. They're both deployed currently side-by-side -side in South Korea to defend against aerial and other missile threats posed by the North Korean military. But tying the two systems together is one step in a larger Army and even DOD-wide program to link all sensors and all shooters. This folds within the Army's multi-domain operations doctrine, which calls for a network sensing and shooting platforms. The aim is to have a network that can detect any threat in the defined region and pass data instantaneously to the right shooting system, whether that's an F-35, a Marine rocket artillery team, or a Patriot or THAAD launcher, just to hit that threat. But it's not been entirely friendly skies for the air defense shooting community. Defense News reported in 2019 that the then director of the U.S. Missile Defense Agency was fighting the transfer of the THAAD capability entirely out of the agency to the Army. That transfer has been on an ongoing debate for at least a decade at that time. And while the Army operates the system, the Missile Defense Agency handles its development and modernization. But when the Army established its Features Command and cross-functional teams to tackle modernization a few years ago, it put a high priority, basically top of the list, on long-range precision fires and air defense modernization. But who controls those top-level decisions is kind of up to the purse string custodians in Congress. Now on the ground, the work falls to the soldiers and the airmen to make that tech work right. And the remote firing from Guam to the island of Rota gave tactical and theater-level commanders a new way to distribute air defense across a wide range. And that's one step in an umbrella of sensors and shooters that the Army's after. This has been Todd South reporting for Military Times.